Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, I will continue my discussion about why the wheels are not spun up before we land. But this time, I'm going to be focused on the things that you have been asking and the suggestions that you have had. Namely, we didn't ask for a motorized wheel. We just thought it would be a great idea to let the wind speed up the, uh, the wheels. Why isn't that done? That doesn't take any technology. Stay tuned. Wind 31016, right, right. Right. right guys, this video is brought to you in cooperation with the Mentor Aviation app. Now, if you guys haven't downloaded the app already, why? It's completely free to do so. You have the download links here in the description of the video. And if you do, you'll get access to, for example, speaking to me or other commercial pilots, aviation enthusiasts, people who are afraid of flying and much, much more. I've also started just now a news section. So you can go in and you can follow what's happening in the aviation world. You know, just by a click of a button, you will be taken to the relevant uh, articles with pictures. And if you want to go deeper and dive into the news more, there will be links to the associated media in there. So get the app now, see you inside there. Make sure that you go into settings and fill out your profile with a profile picture. It's so much nicer to talk to you when I see a face. Right, guys. So, um, that video that I did about motorized gear has generated a lot of feedback. And not all feedback positive, I have to say. But I like that. I like getting constructive feedback. And the, by far, the, the single, if I was just list up the, the, the comments that I'm getting, is like, we didn't talk about you putting electrical motors or anything on the gear. We just want to know why is there not some kind of rotor blades put on the, on the wheel or on the hubcaps that when the aircraft extends the landing gear into the wind, it will automatically start spinning them and reduce the amount of, uh, of rubber used. You know, I've gotten everything from that blunt uh, kind of suggestion to people asking about, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking into maybe a, 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 um, an invention here that, that, you know, I don't know if people have thought about this before, so I have a patent pending. There is some, some good and some bad news here, guys. Um, the, the first thing I'm going to say is that this idea that you're coming using air in order to spin up the wheels is a good idea all right there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing that you haven't thought about or something that that makes that impossible to do but there are a couple of things that speaks against it and we're going to be talking about that today so before i get to that i just want to cover a few of the other feedbacks that i've gotten so some of you are saying that the main reason that we're not you know spinning up the wheels is because of gyro effects the fact that a spinning wheel would cause some kind of gyro effect that would have adverse effect on uh, the handling of the aircraft and the fact is that no no that's not really an issue it wouldn't be an issue at all um, the reason is that we actually do have some very large spinning things already on the aircraft the engines and they spin at far greater speeds and with much more energy than the wheels would and they even though they have some effect the relative effect that they have in you know if you compare it to the overall uh, weight and size of the aircraft is so small that it's negligible and it would be with the wheels as well so the gyro effect not an issue all right um, then we get to what the issue actually is so I have linked to a study, a proper study done by scientists when it comes to the benefit of spinning the wheels down here. And I would really encourage anyone who are really interested in this and want to see the data and the mathematics behind to go in and read that report, right? It's, it's way above my head when it starts to go into the mathematics of it, but some of you might understand it. So go and check that out. But basically the gist of it is that even though Let's say that we would uh, put some kind of rotor blades on the wheels, right? Let's say we do that. Um, first of all, it has been tried, all right? I have found sources dating back to the 1940s when they started looking into that. It's unlikely that they would ever do something on the tires themselves. And the reason for that is because it would just cost too much to develop it. It would cost too much to maintain it. And it's likely that those kind of air pockets that people are talking about would probably break. Um, or they wouldn't be large enough to enable enough rotation for it to be worth it. So that wouldn't be a, an issue. 
Um, the next idea has been to put rotor blades on the hubcaps and there you can kind of see that working, right? That would be actual metal blades or something. They would take up a little bit of space in the wheel well, which is not good, but it, you could come up with some kind of a mechanical model to make that work. But how much of a difference would it actually make? Well, this study that I'm linking to down here shows that if you were to pre-spin the wheels, you still wouldn't get all of that blue smoke away. All right? There would still be acceleration to the wheel, just not the same type of acceleration. So what happens when the aircraft touches down and that cloud of smoke comes off is that the area that touches the runway and the wheel that is now being accelerated up very quickly up to the speed of the aircraft uh, will heat up very quickly. All right? One third of the rubber that meets the runway will turn into that blue smoke. The other two thirds will actually end up on the runway in the form of uh, tire marks, skid marks on the runway. All right? And that's a different problem which we'll get to in a second. So that means that there is a significant amount of rubber that's being used now for each uh, landing. But the study that I'm linking to here be below uh, shows that if we were to, let's say we were to manage to, to um, get the aircraft wheel to speed, speed up to about 50% of the speed of the aircraft. Well then, even though we do that, we would still get quite a lot of acceleration, just a different type of acceleration. And about 37% is the benefit. So it will burn off 37% less rubber. So that means that the 63% of the burn would still be there. So it's only 37% that you're saving by getting the wheel sped up to 50% of the speed, which is a quite high speed to get the wheel sped up to, and probably around the maximum you would reach if you were only to use the airflow, all right? Because it wouldn't, it would never reach 100% of the speed. 50% maybe if the blades were really well designed. If you were to speed up the wheels to the exact speed of the aircraft, all right? So you had exactly the speed when you touched down. The benefit would be about 51%. So about half of the um, uh, the rubber use. All right. So this means that even though you're doing this, you're still not. In a best case scenario, you're managing to reduce the, uh, the, the tire wear with about 50%. And that's using all of this technology that we've talked about. And that, given the fact that it's so relatively cheap to change wheels, gets us to the conclusion that it is not worth it. Right? At the moment, the, uh, the, air, the airlines doesn't see the cost-benefit ratio that they need in order to make this happen. And that's what it comes to. You guys have excellent ideas. They would work. It would reduce the tire wear, no question about it. Just not enough for it to be um, worth it for the airlines to be screwing around with it, okay? That's where we are now. Now, this might change. We might come to a point where the, uh, the rubber prices goes up for whatever reason, for example, and it becomes really expensive to change a tire. And in that case, this technology is very likely to be implemented in some way or another. But at the moment, with the current prices, the cost benefit is not there. And that's why we don't see this happening. All right. It was pointed out by several uh, viewers as well that there are aircraft that do use this, uh, that spin up, for example, the nose wheel in order to avoid um, wear behind the nose wheel where it spits up stuff and damages the, the underbelly of the aircraft. And that is true, but that's not really what we were talking about here. Right, and it also brings us then to a secondary problem that this, this has, and that's the fact that, yes, we are leaving quite a lot of rubber on the runway, and that rubber on the runway um, will become quite slippery, especially when it's wet. So the airports are actually working quite hard, uh, you know, several times a month to clean the runway. And they send out these brushes that uh, uses either combination of really hot water, chemicals and metallic brushes to pick up all of that rubber, take it off the runway and dispose it somewhere. So it is a problem. And that part would also be fixed by reducing the wear of the, um, of the gear. But at the moment, cost benefit is not there. And that's where we're gonna end this. Okay, good. Now, I love that you guys are interacting and I love the way that you're thinking outside of the box. That will help you a lot in the future, right? That's how you need to think. 
you need to come up with with solutions to perceived problems and you know feel free to share them and feel free to to you know to keep thinking that way i find it refreshing it's positive and i love to hear back from you with your suggestions okay because in this case for example it is a good suggestion it's just not good enough for the industry to take it up but keep doing that and if you want to discuss these kind of things once again go and download the mental aviation app right you can become a premium member if you want to kind of support the course and you want to be able to ask questions during the the live streams that i do every week in there but it's completely free you don't have to pay anything the only thing i want is to build this positive and constructive community where you can ask your questions without feeling like a fool and with always getting a um, a respectful answer back you can also get your aviation news from there so that you can follow what's happening in the business both you know when airlines go bust or when there's incidents or accidents happening we will continue to fill the feed for you so without further ado thank you very much for watching have an absolutely fantastic day and i'll see you next time bye bye right guys i really hope that you liked that if you want more content like that more aviation content well then check this out uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.